Welcome back. Let's talk music now. Mary Jane is an emerging R&B and soul musician and songwriter whose talents began to shine brightly after she graduated from high school. Her journey into the music scene took off when, when she started covering popular songs on her YouTube channel, captivating audiences with her soulful voice and unique interpretations. With each cover, she garnered a loyal following, showcasing her ability to infuse emotion and depth into every performance. She joins us now in studio to share more about the musical journey. Mary Jane, very good morning. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm good so stuff. excited to be here. No, I'm excited to have you join us this morning <laughs> to talk about you know, how you started. I do understand you started doing covers on your YouTube page. Yeah. So how did your journey evolve from then? So, to be honest, when I was doing YouTube, I was just trying to get an audience. Yeah. And I was like, okay... Um, let me make sure that people know that I can sing. Right. That's what I did. And then I was like, okay. Um, but as I was doing the YouTube covers, I was actually writing my own music. Right, right. So, and then from there, I started um, creating my EP, which was Phases. That was my debut EP. Mm. Then from there, like, everything else it just, just came blossomed. apart. Yeah. So, let, let's talk about uh, the kind of music that you typically create. So, I make R&B soul, okay. new soul, especially with my EP, it was very... R&B, Neo Soul, but I also am more also in the commercial side right oh, now. Right, right. I'm making more Afrobeat and pop. Mm. Yeah. So did you always have it in you uh, to do R&B or it is just a genre that you decided is so cool and it's something that's doable? I think for me it was, it was something that lived in me. Is it? Because my parents used to like listen to R&B on Sundays and they were like, that, I think that made it a nostalgic genre to me. So every time ah, I listen to R&B, it just traces me back to my childhood. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about the creative process behind your EP uh, titled Phases. Mm. What's that about? Um, it, was, it was me actually just talking about the phases of growing up, you know, and experiencing life as it is. You know, as you're young, you're just like living. Mm -hmm. But the older you get, you start to realize that, okay, no, you need to have dreams. Um, you need to love, you need to, like, there's so many elements that come with growing up. And I think that's so how So are you generalizing or is it simply a reflection of your personal story? It's, it's actually my personal is story. It? But then there's some songs that it's like, I'm listening to people that I love around me and I'm just uh -huh. like, I wonder how that would sound in a song. And then I write from that and I gain inspiration from mm -hmm. that. Is there a musical style that you could, uh, uh, you know, highlight or pinpoint that uh, you think has defined you or has it evolved over the years? It's actually evolved. I think the thing about me is that, like, I listen to different types of music. Yeah. So it really just evolves on whatever I'm listening to. Okay. So, like, at that point, I was listening to a lot of R&B. Right now, I'm listening to a lot of, like, Afrobeat. Mm. So mm. a lot of my music, also the way I write my music is... It's, it's, it really changes from the, the way that I am in my life at yeah. that specific moment. Right, right. Yeah, that's... And you also shot a, a, a short film, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, I did, I did. What is it you don't do? <laughs> <laughs> Let's I talk mean, about that short film. Um, so the short film is a short film of the Phases EP. Mm. So that Phases EP, um, I created like a visual short film of that EP. Okay. So just to show like the phases that I went through. But what were you trying to convey through that film? Um, it was more of the journey of finding oneself and how sometimes you have to let go of certain things sure. to find yourself. Sure. You know, sometimes you have to lose yourself to find yourself type of thing. Yeah. 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 And how did that idea come about? What triggered it? Um, reflection. Mm. I can say reflection because I was at a point where I was trying to find out who I am mm. and mm. not who... I was told to be or not who I think I am, but actually who do I, who, who am I? What do I like? Okay. Do I like it because I just like it or like what's the deeper meaning to the things that I do and what I am? And yeah, just a spiritual journey. It's quite interesting that you say that. So now that you've, uh, you know, come to this stage of reflecting and realizing who you are, yeah. are you happy with the person that you are? Like compared to your 15 year old self? I think I am. And I think one thing I'm happy about is that I follow my dreams. I think that's the one thing. So even with me, I, 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 I actually recently just graduated from yeah. something that I really love doing, which is filmmaking, okay. you know, and okay. I, I think that's one thing I can say is that I am teaching myself to just go for whatever I want. Uh -huh. And I think it's, it's making my younger self proud, you know, of who I'm becoming because I'm becoming who I need to be okay. unapologetically. So filmmaking is closest to your heart compared to your music? 
No. I know it's a, an unfair question to ask. I mean, like, <laughs> it, it is very unfair. Because the thing is, you, like, have your first love, and then you have, like, your second love. Mm -hmm. So first love will always be music. Right, And right. that's what inspires me to have my second love. Mm. Because with music, you need to have visuals. You need to tell a story as well, you know. I love storytelling, even if it's music or if it's visuals, just okay. filmmaking and stuff like that, yeah. We're just chatting off air uh, whether you do have a record label and you mm. said you're independent. So what's yeah. the importance of being an independent artist and owning your own music? I think it's very important, you know. Um, and I think the, the beautiful thing about it is that you get to learn things that you wouldn't know if you were in a record label. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm learning how to manage myself. I'm learning how to package myself as an artist and those certain okay. things you if you were just put in a record label you wouldn't really know how it goes about but as an independent artist I'm finding myself learning more about the business side of music as well because mm -hmm. as much as you're an artist there's also the business part of, of course, it you of know course. and as an independent artist you are forced to learn that what have you, you learned um, firstly like you can't just drop a song you need to you need to literally like plan it out. You need to say, okay, what's what's the way? How, how am I going to market this song? How am mm, I going to, mm. you know, how does it look? What's actually happening like in the space, the music space right now? You look at so many elements that don't that come into just releasing a, a song. You yeah. know, even how do you present yourself on social media? Because right now, social media is a big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, those type of things. You know, I've, I've been having this discussion with some other artists with regards to the importance of being an independent artist, yeah. owning your own music or mm -hmm. being part of a label. And uh, there's been some concerns and views mm -hmm. with regards to whether being a part of a label uh, is beneficial to you because A, it's got a much bigger reach True. and uh, the connections and everything else and everything is just cut, the, the work is cut out for you mm -hmm. compared to being an independent artist. So what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I do agree with you, right? I think... There's certain perks that you do get with being with a record label, and sure. I think um, you cannot disregard that because probably they've been there for a longer time. Yeah. They know more people than you would. That you just find your way. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think it's it is a good thing. I think if you get a good record label that values you and sees you, then definitely go for it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I think mm -hmm. I'm still finding that. Still, I'm still finding. That. Okay. All right. So, what should we expect from you? Beautiful music. Okay. Um, beautiful. Like, do you have anything up your sleeve? Are you working on new material? Yes. So I'm actually working on an EP right now. Um, I hope it will drop before the year ends. Okay. And I hope I'll be back again. Please, by all means, <laughs> you're more than welcome. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm working on right now. Okay. And how do your fans connect with you? Um, social media. Yes. I think social media actually right now is a big thing. It is. Like, Definitely. it makes such a huge difference because... There's no third party anymore. Like you can literally get directly to your audience, mm, you know, mm. and that's how I connect with them on my socials. Mary the Malia is my social handle. Okay. Yeah. And after all, you blossom on social media. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Jane, lovely chatting to you. Eh? All the best. Eh? Thank you. Great stuff. Well, that was musician Mary Jane talking to us about her journey that started when she created a YouTube page singing covers.